Hello and welcome to the Game Engine programming series where I write a game engine from scratch. In the last two videos we spent time working on the part of the project browser that allows us to create new projects. And as a result we are now able to go to create project and choose one of these templates and create a game project. Today I want to start working on the open project part so we can get a list of the projects that we already created and can choose one of those and open it. So last time I created this class, open project, that would become the view model for the open project uh, view that we have here. So now I can set this uh, as the data context for the control. Uh, now the thing is that uh, the only part of this data context that I will use to bind to this control is the list of the projects and otherwise we don't have any properties to bind to and therefore to do the things a bit differently I'm going to uh, remove this inheritance and um, I can just write a static constructor for this and the only thing this uh, class does is basically to remember when where we create a project and save that data into a file that is independent of the project locations and display that back when we restart the primal editor in order to save data about the projects i need another class that would contain this data And the information that I need are uh, the project's name, path, and the date of access, or the date that we last uh, accessed uh, or opened the project. And because I am going to save this uh, to a file, I need to serialize it. So as before, I'm going to use data contract serialization for this. And then I need another class that represents a list of uh, project data. And this class contains just a list of uh, project data, as the name indicates. And again, this is the list that I'm actually going to uh, serialize. So this one should also use the data contract attribute. And in the open project class, I need a constant that would contain the path to a location to save this project data list. Uh, for that, I want to use the application data folder that is available to all applications on Windows. And I can use uh, this special folder uh, method to get uh, to get that. This is the location of application data, and uh, at the end of this, I append a name of the application, which is Primal Editor. And this is a location where we want to save uh, the list of uh, projects. And I need another string that would contain the full path of uh, the, uh, the file that, uh, where I save the data. And it includes the, the file name as well. Um, in a constructor, I'm going to create this folder if it doesn't exist 
and um, and also construct the full path from it. Since again I'm working with uh, files, I'm going to use a try catch block to catch any exceptions that might have been uh, thrown. And this application data path is uh, just the location um, and the file name together. So the file name is uh, project data XML. And this location is just the application data path. Once I read data from this, uh, this location, I want to compile that into a list that I can display. So for that, I need an observable collection here. Uh, again, I am using a private observable collection and a public read-only observable collection to, uh, to bind to my control. So this is a read-only property that I can set here in the constructor. And of course, it also needs to be static since our backing uh, fields and our constructor, basically everything else is static. And I'll have a method that reads data from this file. Okay, my habit and convention is to, uh, contrary to common use, that uh, I put the constructors at the end of the class instead of at the top. So um, that's why I'm replacing everything that comes after my constructors to uh, someplace above it. For now, I'm going to uh, leave this method empty and uh, I would like to first make something that's right to this file. So the way I'll set up this, um, this class to save data to this uh, project data is that whenever I use the class to open a project, I'll just remember uh, whatever I opened and then save it to this um, this uh, project data file. So now I go here and uh, make a public static method that gives me back a project because I am opening a project. So it should give me back that project. And the method name is open. The first thing I want to do is to read. Uh, read project data. Uh, this is because, of course, we read project data here in the constructor as well. But suppose we have multiple instances of the editor open and one of those will save data to, to this file by opening or creating another project, then this file will be updated, right? So I need to read it here again. Uh, in order to uh, to stay updated. Okay, and then I'm going to uh, see what which one of those projects uh, was was uh, chosen by the user or selected to be open. I'm going to search this projects list and see if um, any of um, these elements has the same full path. Of course, I don't have a property that will give me the full path and that's just a path of the project and its name. So 
So in this uh, list, I can look for this full path and see if um, the data, the project data full path is the same. And if so, we have uh, we have got this uh, project. If we don't find any project, so it must be new because we just created it and we can handle that uh, separately. So if it's not, if this project is not null, it means that we found one in the list. And if it is, then we apparently have a new project that we need to uh, add to our list. So I'll have this uh, project uh, set to data. We have this new one. This means that this uh, method was called with a data project data that was not in the list. And the way that happens is from create new project view model as uh, I'm going to implement in a minute. But for now, uh, here I can say I can set the project date. This should be date. to the current time and date and just add it to the rest of projects. And if we found a project that was already in the list, that is uh, good. We just sent, uh, we just set its date uh, because we are now accessing it again. So its date should be updated. And since we now updated the list of projects, we also need a uh, method to save it. And uh, since I have to return a project, um, I need, um, yeah, I'm just going to return return no for now uh, till we are done doing this. So generate this function. I am moving it to, to be next to this one. Now, the only thing that I need to do here in write project data is to order it by date of access and then serialize it to this, this file location. So this is a uh, write project data and to read it, I'm going to check if this file exists in the first place. If so, I deserialize it. After I read from the file, I'm going to again order the projects from uh, new to old. For that, I can use order by descending. I clear the list of uh, my projects. So I can set the new one uh, or replace it with a new one. Now here I'm checking if the full path, which contains the project file name as well, if that exists. Uh, if that's not the case, that means that the project was deleted or is missing. So we don't add that to the list to be displayed. Now here uh, again, in order to display the list, I need more information like the icon and the screenshot. That means that I'm going to add a couple of more uh, properties here in project data. They won't be saved, but I just use them to contain some data that I can read. 
So here again, there's a byte array that contains the, the icon, the binary content of the icon. And one for the screenshot. So here I can read the icon from the project location. And remember that we saved those icon and screenshots in this hidden uh, folder, subfolder that we create for each project, uh, which is just a primal uh, folder. Okay, now I've got everything that I need for the project to be displayed and I just add it to the list of projects. So here in the constructor, I set up my data and read from this file if it exists. Whenever um, we create a new project, we also need to call this method to open the project because we just created it. And when we click on create, then it also opens the project after it uh, was created. So here in um, here, we have to do that now. So in this place where I have created the project, um, I can call open project uh, open. And this will give me back the project that I can use in the rest of the editor. But for now, because I don't create any in this method, I just return null. So uh, this project is unused for now. And after this, I can go here in the open project control and bind the list of projects uh, to this list box. And again, I'm going to give this a name in order to be able to access it. And it's pretty much the same as I did here for the, uh, for the creation for the create project uh, screen. So I can just copy paste uh, this part actually. And of course I want uh, the first element or the first uh, item in the list to be selected. That's good. And uh, this is icon and because now each item in the list is a project data type. So um, as you can see here, uh, we can bind to project name and the icon and the screenshot. So this one is already okay. Other than that, um, for now I can just build and test if if we can do something with this. So we don't have any project created yet or, or this application doesn't know about them, of course, because we created our projects before this. So uh, here in primal projects, I can delete all of this. Now I can go and create a new one. Uh, like so. We can see that there is already <laughs> one item here. 
uh, I can open this uh, again and yeah it's kind of working uh, I don't see the screenshot uh, for some reason but I do see one project uh, that we just created so let's see what's going uh, wrong with the screenshot So I've got an icon and uh, the screenshot is the same size. Hmm. What happens when I create this? Ah, I'm saving to I'm saving the icon again to the screenshot. That's not uh, correct. It should be a screenshot file path. I was sa saving the icon into the screenshot. That's why it probably didn't. Yeah, here I have uh, the screenshot is the same as the icon. Now I'll uh, make a new project. I still don't see the screenshot. Let me see. Of course, if you already have uh, spotted that I used the um, wrong name here for referring to my list box, then you would have been correct. I, of course, need to update this as well. Uh, so this is project list. And I think now it should work. Yeah, there is, um, there is a screenshot here as well. Next, the only thing I uh, have to implement is this uh, button that when I click on it uh, or if I double click any of these items, then it should open a project for me. Let's uh, do that now. I can basically copy paste this uh, from create project to open project so first uh, just uh, make an event handler for this so now uh, I can get the data context which is this time the open project class and a project that I want to open is uh, the one that I selected and that's from the uh, project list box projects list box and it's a project data uh, type and of course this method is um, is static so I don't actually need to get the data context anyway. I just go here and do like open project and then call this static method. And of course I uh, shouldn't uh, use the same uh, method name for, <laughs> for this class. So I'll rename this to open selected uh, project and this should work. And here I just check if uh, this project is not null, which uh, right now of course is because I only re uh, return a null from this uh, method. And 
this can go away. Okay. And whenever I double click on one of these items, I want to open it as well. So I'm going to have an event handler here for that. So I need a list box. List box. Uh, item container style. So I can set the style of my uh, list box items. And in here, I just have an event setter uh, for uh, double click. So events, uh, mouse double click. And here again, I just call this function. So now if I double click on this one, then, well, obviously it will close the application because uh, the project is null. So the result, the dialog result will be false. And if that's the case, the application will terminate. Now we almost have completed both new project and open project controls, but we still need to pass the project that we opened to the main window to continue working on it. The way I want to do that is to use the data context from the dialog box, because I can access this dialog box from both the project browser itself, so the uh, new uh, new project control and open project control, as well as in the main window. So when I set the data context of the dialog box, like so, to the project that we just opened, I can use this to get the project in the main window. And now in the main window, I can say that uh, data context for this window is the same as that of the project browser. Of course, I want to check if this data context uh, is not null. So if it is null, that means that we, for some reason, failed to open a project and set it as the data context of the dialog box. And then we need to exit uh, and shut down the application. Otherwise, we have the project as the data context and we can continue uh, in the editor. One thing I uh, need to address now is something that could become a problem later on when we have the ability to close a project and open a new one in the editor. That means that we need to unload the project that we already have. If we take a look at the project class, we of course don't have any methods that uh, load, save or unload the project. So I can do that now. Uh, first, I would add a, a property that would just return the current uh, project that is loaded. If the data context is set to a project, then this will return a uh, a project and otherwise it will be a uh, no. So whenever I have a, a method that would unload the project, like so,
Then I could go here in main window and ask the project. If we already have a project loaded, then we can just uh, call on load. And otherwise this uh, doesn't do anything and we can s set the data context to the new project. And of course I would like to unload the project uh, whenever I exit the application as well. So I can go to the constructor of the main window and have another event handler for the case when we are closing. Now I want to write the methods for loading and saving the project. Uh, these two methods are static because for loading a project, we just have a path and we don't have a project instance of this project class yet. So it should be static. And to save it, we, well, we could uh, use a non-static member method, but uh, to be consistent with the way we load the project, uh, I am also going to make the save method static as well. The save method is uh, the same as load, but then the other way around, of course. So this should be uh, save and then we give it a project to save. One more thing I want to have in this class is a pointer to one of these scenes that would tell me which one of these scenes is active. So I'll have an active scene property. And I also want to have a default name for the projects that we create. Well, it's not strictly necessary because we are only creating projects by deserialization uh, by using this function. So actually we are, we don't even need this constructor anymore, but I'll leave it there for now. Just uh, in a case that we want to just uh, create a project for uh, in the code for some reason. I still have to initialize this list of scenes with the observable collection, the writable, the modifiable uh, list. Normally I do that in the constructor, but the serializer, when it's constructing this object, it doesn't call this constructor because it also has these parameters that it doesn't know about. So it constructs this object in another way, not by calling the constructor. So what I can do is that after the serialization, uh, I can have a method that handles the rest of the initialization that the serializer doesn't. For this, we have an attribute uh, class that is on the serialized and it, um, it marks a function that is called after the serializer is done. And here I can't do anything that needs to be done after this, the serialization is done. So for example, if the scenes is not uh, null, that means that it has been initialized with this. Then I uh, create a new uh, scenes, I read only observable collection scenes.
uh, because this the, on the serialized is not in the constructor, then of course I need uh, a private setter for these scenes as well. And because this code could be uh, executed after everything, all controls, the main window and uh, other UI elements have been loaded, uh, we need to update the bindings to this uh, list. And here I can just say, uh, just, just call the on property changed uh, method. This makes the controls to update their bindings to this list. And whenever we want to construct a project using the constructor, I just call this method that we just wrote on the serialized. And this streaming context doesn't really matter because I'm not using it here anyway. Uh, that kind of covers the basics of the project. And now I'll move to scenes and see what's missing here uh, in order to, uh, to, yeah, to be usable in the editor. First thing I would like to add here is because we have he here an active scene, I would like the scenes themselves also to know whether they're active or not. They have a reference to the containing project. So I could use this to ask the project what active scene it is. And then if the scene is the same as this one, then we are active and otherwise we are not active. So I'll just have a property, a Boolean property. So we can ask the, the scene itself if it's active or not. In the project class, I want to be able to save which of these scenes is active as well, because whenever we load the project, we have no idea which of these scenes we have to set as the active scene. So here I'm going to save it as the data member like so. And I probably have to update our templates that we have to include this as well. Okay, I probably need to do something like this. Because I have one scene here and I would set this one to be active. And there is a reference to this uh, I2 and it also refers back to the, uh, the project. So I can see in what way I can set the references in this, uh, in this XML file. Uh, now I can just copy paste this to the other templates. Let's see if uh, it still works. Okay, now I have this uh, project here and I can go in the main window and set a breakpoint here to see what the data context uh, will contain. Uh, we are still failing to have the data context. Let's see if I had any errors. No. Oh, of course I have to create new projects that would contain this new scene reference that we just made. So I'm going to delete uh, these 
projects that we already had. Going to create a new one. It is still failing. So um, here in the open project, uh, I return the, uh, I return no, of course. So <laughs> we never get a project. I of course need to create a, to to load a project that is um, that we chose. So here, load uh, this project file and now it would hopefully work yeah so here we have a data context set to a project I see that the active scene is nil so what I did wasn't the correct thing to do uh, let me see how to how I actually need to do that okay I just think that uh, the way I handle this is um, is not the right way because if you look at the project uh, I don't know in what order the deserializer constructing all this all these properties so it could as well be uh, constructing this active scenes before it's adding the scenes here. So the reference to uh, one of these scenes doesn't make sense because, well, these uh, scenes would be empty. I think I'm just going to save uh, this instead. So this one is not um, the property that is saved but this one is and I have to make this like a regular property then and I'm just going to make it like this uh, bindable property because who knows uh, how I will be using this is active in the user interface And then I'll save this instead. And in the projects, uh, in the deserializ deserialization, I can then uh, go through these scenes and, and find the one that is uh, active and set it as the active, um, active scene. And then once again, I have to change back our templates. I need to uh, remove this line now. And then add a new line here. So let's test what happens now. Going to create an empty project. So I can see now that my scene has, uh, my scene list has one element, one scene. And uh, it is not active. Uh, let me see. Maybe these properties need to be in alphabetic order. Uh, you never know.
Okay, I'm going to make a, a new project. Yeah, that worked. Uh, so if I put these properties in al alphabetic order in the template file, then it will uh, read it just fine. So now this active scene is uh, null and hopefully now it is set to the one that's active. So that's good. Uh, what else? Uh, here we had also a breakpoint, uh, and that's okay. All right, um, I think I'll wrap it up here. Uh, the only thing I still have to do is to, again, uh, copy these templates. Okay, so today we finished um, working on uh, the open project and create project uh, controls. So these uh, are ready um, as far as I can tell. And uh, now we also have access to the project that we loaded or created in the, in the main window of our le level editor. And here, yeah, in the project, we now can load and save uh, the project as well. And in scenes, uh, we have now an active scene or the ability for a scene to be active or inactive. And uh, yeah, next time I'll start working on the main window because yeah, right now it's just a blank slate and uh, I'll make a start on the initial interface of the Primal Editor once we have a project opened. Thanks for watching. If you like this video, please feel free to like and subscribe. If you join me on Patreon, you'll get access to the code on GitHub so you don't have to type everything over from the video. Plus there are also other nice goodies and rewards exclusive to my Patreon supporters. Please use the link in the video description to check them out. I hope to see you next time, until then take care and happy game engineering!